Uh, hey guys, what's up? So in this uh, video, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about um, a, a basically a day in the life of a, of a newer programmer, I would say. Uh, and this is just kind of like a mock simulation type of thing of, of, uh, of how I kind of approach certain situations where I, I don't know uh, something that's put in front of me. And, um, and, and, and whether good or bad, uh, this is kind of like the, the, you know, the rabbit hole that I end up going down. And I just want to kind of show you. Um, so if I'm like new to programming and I'm just like I said, I'm kind of just kind of pretending here a little bit. Uh, and I don't know what, what anything means here where, where I'm like, okay, this guy's comment, don't write functional code in C sharp. That language doesn't even optimize tail recursion. So when you're like, well, optimize tail recursion, well, what the, what, the, what the hell is tail recursion? So, you know, obviously the logical thing is that you would search tail recursion, try to figure that out. So you can see in computer science, a tail call uh, is like a function. At the end of that function, it's going to call uh, itself. So if it, if it calls itself, then it's, it's considered to be tail recursive because it, like if you have a function, a and at the end of function a it calls function a then it's tail recursive right that's possibly uh, a good explanation in a nutshell i don't know but you could go in here and you could be like well in computer science uh a subroutine which really you can just consider that like a function uh call performed at the it's the final action of a procedure so you're looking you're like tail recursion or tail in recursion so it's like well what is tail in recursion so you start looking in here um, what is tail recursion? So you get to the stack overflow question and it's like tail recursion is well described in previous answers, but I think an example, and he gives an example of a function that he calls rec sum, uh, or I guess for short for receive sum maybe. Um, and you have this, this, uh, this variable that gets passed in, which is a, a number. And, uh, if X equals one, it returns out of the function. So if X is not equal to one, uh, it will it will instead take x and uh, and call itself again uh, with the argument though being x minus one. So in this example, you can see he calls the function initially with five. And hopefully you guys can see this. So he calls this with five, and then he's um, saying okay five plus. But so when he calls this function, this this code below here is actually what he's describing as what happens in the Python language. Uh, with, with the way Python handles re recursion. So the interesting thing with, with this is that each time this recursive function will call itself over and over and over and over again uh, before it ever actually returns the final value. So um, the interesting thing is that the final value, once again, so it, it, it has to go all the way down to where, uh, you know, X finally equals one to where it finally returns. Uh, but then you can see in like the comments, he's like, Python is kind of an odd choice here since as far as I know, tail recursion, or it does not have tail recursion elimination. So you're like, what the hell is tail recursion elimination? So you start looking at that. And then you're like, oh, uh, language agnostic, what is tail recursion elimination? And it's about the elimination optimization that saves stack space. So then you're like, stack space, what the hell is that? So you start going down that rabbit hole. Okay, what is stack? And, and, uh, there's stack overflow we know what that is um but there's all like so basically you can you continue to do this stuff until eventually like your brain turns to mush and you're just like fuck it fuck recursion fuck functional programming fuck everything right um so that's where we don't want to be uh in computer science and the thing that i would caution i think just on, on beginners is that um, a lot of the shit doesn't matter so i've been programming for uh eight years five professionally uh, for major corporations, and, and as far as um, as far as I know, I've not had to deal with uh, tail recursion optimization or anything like that. So the fact that C sharp C sharp lacks tail recursion optimization, I would certainly probably agree that without even having to look into it, um, that its lack of being able to do that by saving stack space and all this other stuff probably means that it's not as good of a functional language as something like uh, Haskell or even shit. I, I don't know. Uh, um, Scala or something. I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm just, I'm just kind of guessing out there. But the, the thing is, is like the, the, the purpose of this video is just simply to say that some of this stuff should only matter to you when, it, when, when you determine that it's, it's an appropriate time for it to matter to you. So if you're into functional programming, clearly you want to know uh, the differences. If you have a lot of time on your hands, clearly you might want to read up on this stuff. If you're pulling your hair out, though, um, going down, you know, too, too many rabbit holes like I just did where it's like all these different things there's no way you're going to understand all of that stuff uh, in one fell swoop. Now, you might be able to have like a, a, an ignorant conversation with somebody else about it, but you're not going to understand to the point where you would care that much about C-sharp having uh, tail-end uh, optimization 
uh, or, you know, versus some other language or something like that. So basically my entire purpose of this video is like, if you're just beginning programming and you start going down some sort of rabbit hole, uh, and that is like this, you know, this abyss that's basically just, you know, taking away your motivation, uh, taking away your brain power, taking away uh, your productivity to, to get things done and to continue, to continue learning. Um, you know, just take a break from that for a moment. Just, you know, focus on little concepts and things like that. You could actually do what I just did where you're like, okay, let me look this up, this up, this up, and this up. And, and then try to get to the base level of like, okay, clearly I need to understand what a stack is in order to understand how stacks are optimized uh, with recursion and different languages and things like that. So, um, I don't know, man, T take that for, for what it, what it's worth. I don't know what it's worth. That's just kind of my thoughts, but, um, it's something that as, cause I am interested in computer science. I, I, I don't, I didn't study theoretical computer science or anything like that. Um, I've never built my own compiler. As far as I know, I probably never will. And, um, I never really had to. Um, so, you you could probably go your entire career as a SQL developer, or maybe not SQL, but maybe a web developer, a PHP developer, something like that, and you probably would never have to worry about a lot of this stuff. Um, uh, that's just my thoughts at this point, but um, it, it just really depends on what you're doing. So I just, just once again, just really just a word of caution that if it, if it's pulling your hair out with complexity and things like that, it just may be that that you're just not ready for that, or that you know this particular problem that that is that is being addressed or discussed and things like that is not your problem and, and that maybe you shouldn't try to make it into uh, a problem if it's going to deter you from being able to uh, be productive maybe with something else that doesn't uh, that you know that, that matters a little bit more to, to I guess your productivity all right guys thanks for watching man have a good day bye hey guys so a lot of you asked me how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer and I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. So this video is also sponsored by Edwonix Learning Solutions. And in the description tab below, you're going to find two links for Edwonix. And both of them are at a 50% discounted rate. So if you'd like to have money off, like I do, then uh, definitely be sure to check that out. But one of the projects they have here is uh, Projects in Laravel is the name of the course, and it says Learn Laravel Building 10 Projects. So you're going to build 10 different projects in this Laravel course. It's 50% off. You just have to visit the link, sign into your account, click Buy Now, and the coupon code will already be applied. So you just have to pick your payment option and go from there. Um, that is for learning Laravel, which is the popular PHP uh, framework that everybody seems to be talking about these days. The next uh, course that they're promoting this month, which is also at a 50% discounted rate, is the ability to choose 10 different courses here. So uh, you can choose 10 different courses. They're all at a discounted rate of, of uh, a flat rate of, of uh, $49.50 for 10 different courses here. And you can choose from any one of these uh, 75 courses that, that they have available. So once again, same thing, just click buy now once you select your 10 different courses. Um, basically, you go through, you click uh, 10 different courses and two more courses to unlock the bundle. There you go. Click buy now. And once again, you just pick your payment option and you're good to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe and vote on my uh, videos if you would, please. I appreciate that and have a good day, guys. Bye.